Hello and welcome back to episode 94 of this very special Summer of Freedom season, counting us down to episode 100 of the Unstoppable Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed the journey so far. We began with a session where I talked about letting go or disregarding conventional thinking and taking control of your thoughts. And the second day yesterday, I talked about daring to dream, to think big, to allow yourself to create a magnificent and compelling vision, to unlock the wild fantasies within you and actually think big about the possibilities that are open to you in your lifetime. Today, we get a little bit more practical, at least a little bit. Today's episode is entitled Design Your Life, and it's about taking that big vision and starting to break it down into manageable chunks. We'll look at the uh, the next stage in terms of that logical journey from creating the vision now to creating manageable goals. My message to kick us off out the gate, go straight to your dreams, do not pass go. You don't have to live your life the way other people expect you to. This session is all about creating a design for your life. Episode 93 is really about opening yourself up to possibility and giving yourself permission to dream in spite of any fears or doubts that you may have. When we do so, we open up the door to our potential. This entire Summer of Freedom series is designed to be the rally call that jolts you into thinking differently about your life. We get one shot, so we may as well enjoy this ride. So part of the inspiration behind this series is that I personally reached a point where I'd lost the fun in my business. It was no longer being rewarding mentally, physically, or financially. And as a result, I put so much of my dreams on hold in terms of my personal vision, what I want to create in my lifestyle, that I reached this point in my business where it felt like I'd reached a threshold. You know, I'd gone beyond that threshold. I was fed up. The fun had gone. And I had this fuck this moment. And I decided to throw all of the cards up in the air to see what was left after I did that. You know, I wanted to really reevaluate everything that was going on in my life, my business, to really understand what it is that's going to fire me up, bring back the passion, and bring back the fun in every step. As my mentor says to me, if it ain't fun, you ain't doing it right. It was really a moment where I took back over the reins or the controls to my life. I'd been living on autopilot and I was cruising way off course and rapidly running out of fuel, so to speak. So to continue the metaphor, I had to ground the plane, refuel and set a new course for a new destination. And it, believe me, it takes a lot of energy to do this. You know, taking the foot off the gas in business to, to spend time to reevaluate your priorities, your routine. It, not only does it take you off the road in terms of the, 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 the business generating activities, which is the tap that brings the money in, it takes a lot of mental capacity. It takes a lot of energy to do this. Reinventing and redefining our lives and our businesses is not easy. But then again, neither is suffering in the face of the status quo. If you want it badly enough and you're willing to make some changes in your life to cause the, ch- the, the future to look more brightly for you, then you can radically de- redefine what your life is about and set an entirely new course. And you don't have to believe me, but I believe that anything that you want to do is truly possible for you. Yes, you really can have it all. If you don't believe that you can, then you never will. And despite all the historic self-help advice about sacrifice and delayed gratification, the reality in the modern world that we live in is the only thing that you really need to give up are the assumptions that keep you in your comfort zone. The assumptions that hold you back from doing something remarkable with your life by your definition and on your terms. And I should warn you now that this Summer of Freedom miniseries is not going to be for everyone. In fact, it's probably not for most people. You can tell my tone, my energy in this new podcast series is rather different from what you've experienced before. And if you haven't listened to me before, then go back and listen to the polite, sensible, nice Dan. You might like him a bit better. But right now, I am pumped up. And like I said, this may not be for most people. I've spent my entire life hearing my family tell me most people don't do that. And the problem with that is I am not and never will be most people. And my guess is if you choose to listen to a show that goes by the name of the Unstoppable Podcast, then you aren't most people either. So instead of putting this together for most people, aka the general public, 
this podcast, this series, and everything that I do is for that small minority of people who are committed to creating a life on their own terms while making a remarkable positive difference in the lives of others at the same time. In short, this is for people who want to do something spectacular with their lives, to achieve the remarkable, to defy the odds, and to go after world domination. You may be an entrepreneur, you may be a musician, you may be an artist, you may be an athlete, you might be a rebel trying to change your organization from within. Whatever the case may be, we all have chosen in some way to shun convention, to walk our own path and to boldly venture into the unknown in pursuit of something different. And it might feel like a lonely road for some of us at some times, for, for those of us who choose to go against the grain and pursue the path of mastery. But I can tell you that you and I are not alone. My goal, or one of my goals with the Summer of Freedom, is to create a gathering of tribes, to unite a new generation, a new wave of practical dreamers, innovators, inspired thinkers, visionary entrepreneurs, rebel leaders, movers and shakers, so that we never have to feel as though we are walking alone. In the tough moments, a return to the path of convention can sometimes seem appealing. I've been there over the course of my business. When you look at the comfortable lives that some people lead, that path of convention is paved with safe lives and very little chance of failure. But where is the fun in being like most people? I refuse to accept average. I refuse to accept mediocre I am signed up and committed. I am signed. I have signed my name to doing something remarkable, to becoming unstoppable. This is what this show is all about. So no matter what you've been told, no matter what's happened to you in the past, no matter what mistakes you've made, you can completely change the way you live every day of your life. You can focus the majority of your time on the things you enjoy, and you can also make an incredible difference in the lives of other people while you're at it. Trust me, you can have fun in what you do and make a difference. In fact, many people in this world right now are counting on you to do exactly that. And trust me, when you find the fun and you find the flow in what you do, you make a bigger difference by default. Today's episode is really about translating those grand visions that you have into a specific design for your life, a roadmap that serves as a playbook for your life. The map starts with some very big questions. Because once we dare to dream, we must make some decisions. What do we really want to get out of life? In other words, what's your ultimate vision? What is that wild fantasy that truly makes you feel alive? If you didn't have to do the things that you currently have to do, or feel like you have to do, what would you do instead? It's time to stop suppressing that dream and make it a reality. What do you want each day to be like? The vision that we live, the vision that we create is unfolded each and every day. Whilst we can keep looking at the mountaintop, the peak where we're heading, it doesn't change how we feel right now. What do you want each day to be like on the journey? Our highest visions are going to take time to construct. Patience is a virtue, my friends. So it's critically important that we understand what our perfect day looks like so we can enjoy every single moment of the journey. Yes, we're going to experience some tough times. We're going to experience some challenges and obstacles. We tackled that yesterday. But at least if you're following the right path, you're heading to the right destination, and you proactively and consciously decide what you want your day to be like, then you can control the experience. So what does your ideal day look like from start to finish, beginning from the very moment that you choose to wake up? who you wake up with, what you have for breakfast, how you spend your morning, all the way through to what you do each hour of the day until you rest again at night. What does that ultimate day look like for you? Remember, the guiding principle behind everything we talk about on this show, everything we talk about within this Summer of Freedom series is about personal responsibility. You can make all the excuses you want. They won't cut it with me. If you're here listening to this, then you have to take responsibility for your life. That includes the decision about how you're going to live your life each day and how you're going to react and feel to the circumstances that you experience during that day. And we've got two important points to consider here, where we are right now and where we want to be. Number one, where we are right now. And number two, where we want to be. 
Everything in between those two lines is simply a milestone on the journey towards your ideal life. This is all about making conscious decisions about how you will spend your time and what you will choose to focus upon. Not only in terms of the activities that you choose to focus upon, but how you choose to feel. What emotions are you going to focus on? How do you want to experience each day? Because at the end of the day, avoiding the cliche, every goal, every vision we are pursuing right now is to elicit a certain feeling. I call it our core desired emotions. If you strip everything back, everything that we are pursuing, everything that we are going after is to achieve a series of emotions. It could be freedom. It could be success. It could be excitement. It could be love. It could be contribution. Whatever it is for you, deep within your core, there are a series of emotions we're trying to experience. So once you can identify what those core desired experiences are, and if you just give yourself a moment, you can recognize what they are. You know what they are. You know how you want to feel. And if you don't, you can just simply choose, by the way. This is conscious creation. You are the creator of your life. You hold the pen, remember? Just decide. Once you know how you want to feel, then that becomes your focus. And when you build your decisions around those core desired emotions, then guess what? You set goals that are truly aligned. You know, Everyone's talking about finding alignment, but what the heck do they mean? Well, there's two things they mean. They mean, number one, finding alignment with those core inner desired emotions. Because if you know that freedom, happiness, love, prosperity, and growth are your primary desired emotions, then you should be setting your goals so that every time you achieve a goal, it, en- it enhances your feelings in those areas. This is why people set arbitrary goals and when they achieve them, they suddenly think, this doesn't feel right. I don't feel fulfilled. It's because they don't match your inner guidance system, which is your core desired experiences, your core desired emotions, your core values. So start from that place. Start from that place and understand where you want to go. Now, this entire process of creating a life by design, designing your life, begins with an evaluation of where we are right now. We need a starting point. We need a benchmark. And then as we make plans, we then will simply make small adjustments via our actions to move closer each day to the ideal day and the ultimate visions that we'll craft. But if we do it from a point of awareness of knowing deep within our core what we're truly pursuing, then we can be sure that we're making the right choices. So here are a selection of steps. I've got five steps you for creating a design for your life. Step one, get yourself a physical journal or notebook for designing your life. You know, I use apps, tools, web-based things for almost everything. I use Evernote prolifically. My Evernote I've been using since 2009, probably. I didn't even know how far back to take notes. But for something important like this, like creating a design for your life, I recommend using a hardback journal. The act of putting pen to paper will commit your plans to your mind. And you're also saying this is a higher value activity. So invest in a nice hardback journal or notebook for this designing process. And watch out, by the way, in the future, I do intend to release some kind of hashtag unstoppable journal. It's on my list of grand plans. I'd love to have one, mainly for myself, but I'm sure, you know, once I create this sexy document, which is going to be a a primary goal setting uh, book, I know there's some great examples already out there. You know, you guys might want one too, but I'm just planting that seed. Either way, it's not available right now. So do go get yourself a physical journal. Step two, Make an assessment of your life at present. Step two is to make an assessment of your life at present. Firstly, here's what I want you to do. Write out a description of your typical daily routine now. We've touched upon your ideal day, what you want it to look like. That's going to be the next step. We're going to look at that next. Right now, we want to evaluate what your typical daily routine looks like now. Can you map out what your average day, or your typical day rather, looks like from morning to night, from waking to sleep? Some of you may be able to do this from memory, but what I would strongly recommend you do is to take out, you know, take out your journal and literally document it for the next few days. Write down everything that you do, how you spend your time. It's going to be very revealing. I've done this a number of times. Yeah, and I've used apps. There's all things like toggle and to-do lists you can do to do this to track it. But keep it simple. Take your pen, take your pad. Over the next three days, just write down everything that you do morning to night. And once you've done that, how would you rate your satisfaction with your daily life at present? Out of 10. When you look at your daily routine, how do you feel about it? This is without reference to any ideal day at this point. This is how do you currently feel? How satisfied are you with that daily routine, your daily life? 
you know, a couple of things will come up when you do that exercise. You'll probably recognize that your time isn't necessarily being spent as wisely as it could be. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. But secondly, you'll, you'll, you'll get a sense of how your life is on a day-to-day basis. It's very easy for us to live in the warp. I call it the warp. You know, it's autopilot, blinkers on. That's what led to this whole piece here where I'm talking about reinvention and revolting and redesigning, you know, t- making rapid change in your life. This is what it's about. It's about having awareness, becoming aware and being willing to make changes. So do the exercise. Spend the next three days mapping out your day. Don't cheat the system and make it suddenly better than it is. Just do life as you do. And make a note of what you do in the morning, afternoon, and night. And after that three-day process, rate how satisfied you are with your daily life at present out of 10. Secondly, what I want you to do is to evaluate where you are within each of the five core areas of your life. I, I to, to make goal setting and whatever you want to call it simple in terms of mapping or designing your life, I simply use five core uh, categories to map my uh, my visions and my goals. Number one is the self, which includes the body, mind, and spirit. Number two is the relationships, loving relationships, family, friendships, associations. Number three is lifestyle. That's your home, your travel, your adventures. It's play. It's how you spend your time. Number four is professional. That's your career or business. And then number five is money. It's your income, your investments, your savings, your debt. These five categories, self, people, lifestyle, profession, and work, uh, money, sorry. Use these five categories. And what you can do if you want to, if you want to, uh, if you want to, if you want to go a bit deeper, you can create subcategories within each within each piece. So, for example, you know, under the self banner, you could do self, body, fitness. You know, you could create whatever's important for you. I create the broad brush: self, people, lifestyle, profession, and money, to give you uh, some headings to begin with. But within that, you might choose to create your own subcategories. You know, within within body, you could do fitness, health, well being. Within um, people you could do love, family, relationships. Within uh, lifestyle, you could do a separate category for your home life. You could do a separate category for your travel, etc. You get the picture. But write out your core categories, whatever you choose to use. If you choose to use subcategories, do that too. And what you can do if you choose to use subcategories, i.e. self, body, fitness, then you can rate each subcategory as a standalone piece at a 10 and then get yourself an overall score for the main category. What you want to do for each of these five core areas, the self, relationships, lifestyle, profession, and money, or finances, you want to come up with a score out of 10 for each area. So you've got a clear picture of where you are right now. And again, you know, this this exercise, you can pull it apart, but this is just a ballpark. Don't, don't waste too much time on this. We just want to get a sense of what's how you feel about your, your current life. Step Three is to design your ideal day. This is where we start to write out your ideal day. Write in a first person about your desired daily lifestyle. This is like telling a story. This is a narrative of your ideal day. It's a walkthrough from morning to night. And just, you know, avoid using bullet points. Make this visual. Make it descriptive. Tell a story. Describe how you're living your life in detail. Not about how much money you're making, all this kind of stuff. Describe in vivid detail how you choose to live your life. This is your ideal day. You know, if you were to, if you were able to do anything you wanted, spend your time with who you wanted, and spend your time in your home or your your business, the things that you have. What do you, how would you spend your time? What activities would you engage in? This is about what gets you excited in the day, what gets you out of bed in the morning. If money wasn't a factor to you at all, how would you spend your time? What activities would be most fulfilling to you? Your narrative doesn't have to be super detailed, but it can be a, you know, a high level view of the major themes, people and activities that you're going to encounter during your ideal day. But from my experience, the richer the detail, the clearer your vision will be and the easier it will be to make the tweaks to your current lifestyle so that you can become more closely aligned with your ideal day. So step three is to design your ideal day. Think about some of the main elements when you've done that, once you've actually created your narrative. Look at what some of the core themes are. It could be living on the coast of California. It could be uh, working four days a week. It could be driving your favorite car. And once you've done that and kind of extracted the core themes that need to change think about what is it going to take to get you that lifestyle that you've described in your ideal day because we're going to use these answers to help you with step four which is to create a design for your life this is where we take the ideal day we take our assessment of our life at present and we create a vision a more clear vision for our lifetime goals and our one-year goals so 
Here we're going to break things down into two different timelines. We're going to look at your lifetime aspirations or your long-term goals. I call it wide lens. And then we're going to look at your one-year goals and aspirations. I call that narrow lens. So starting with your lifetime, what do you want to be, do, and have in each of those five core areas of your life over your lifetime, over the long-term future? And the reason why I don't do this in terms of three, five, or 10-year timelines, for example, is firstly because we tend to really dress dramatically, underestimate what we can do over the long term. We tend to overestimate what we can do in the short term or the near future. But when it comes to the longer term future, it's very common to underestimate what we can actually achieve. And if you start thinking in five, 10 year increments, for example, you may make judgments that limit your ability to achieve your vision over these timelines because you're making those decisions or those judgments based upon your present abilities, your present network, your current financial circumstances. And similarly, your passions, your priorities, and the tools and technology that's going to be available to us is going to change over time. So setting arbitrary timescales at this point, to me, doesn't add any real value. So I want you to think about your long-term goals, your lifetime goals. Just think of it big picture. It doesn't have to have a timeline on it. Think about what you want your life to look like over the, over the longer-term future. What do you want to experience? What do you want to have achieved over the long term in each of the five areas that we looked at earlier? The self, the body, the mind, and the spirit. The relationships, your loving life, your res- your relationships with your friends, your family, your lifestyle, your home, travel, adventure, you know, the leisure time, work, profession, career, business, what do you want to achieve in your business, what do you want to achieve in your profession, and then finally financials, thinking about your income, your investments, your savings, eliminating debt, that kind of stuff. What does your ideal life look like in each of those five areas in the long term? And this is where I want you to really think big. This is where I just want you to, to let yourself... Put on the wide lens, look at the big picture over the course of your lifetime, and and, and look at that distance focus. Some of these things you may experience in the next few years, some over the longer term. Don't restrict yourself here. Don't overthink it. And remember, dare to dream. This is your opportunity to paint the ideal picture for your life. No one can tell you what is realistic or unrealistic. There is no such thing as an unrealistic goal. There's only such a thing as an unrealistic deadline. You know, if you're committed, you can make serious change in your life. Trust me, I've seen it time and time again. There is, if there's someone else in the life, in this world, living the life that you want to create, they are just another human being. They are no different from you. You can create it too. So think, what type of lifestyle do you truly want to be living? How much money do you want to be earning on a monthly, weekly, or daily basis? What will you do with this money? If you make that kind of money, what will it allow you to do? How would you ideally spend your time? What activities do you want to be spending most of your time on? Where do you want to live? Who are going to be the key people in your life? What's your body look like? What's your mental state look like? What's your spiritual life like? How is your emotional state? How is the travel and adventures? What kind of things are you going to do with your time? Just allow yourself to freely write into the point where you think you are done. You can't write anymore. And once you read that point, I want you to go for another minute. More will come. Trust me, just allow yourself to dream. New ideas will come. So take those five categories, the self, the body, the mind, the spirit, your relationships, your loving life, your family, your friendships, your lifestyle, home life, travel, leisure, adventure, thinking about your profession, career or business. And then finally, in your financial life, your income, your investments, your savings. Really take the time to dream. Just write down everything that you'd like to achieve or experience, do be or have in your lifetime. And remember, you can keep adding to your journal over time. This is your life list. And life is created to expand, so keep on expanding. The next step here beyond this is to take what you've just done in terms of designing your life. Step five is to design your year. This is your big picture you've created. And this is where things now get a little more tangible. You're no longer looking at your lifetime vision, but you're looking at what you're going to commit to doing, being, or having over the next 12 months. This is about reverse engineering your lifetime goals to determine which goals that you want to accomplish within the next 12 months so that you will make progress over the next month to month towards your longer term aims. So take all of those big visions that you've just written down, all those wild fantasies and big dreams, and select a number of those key goals to translate and reverse engineer into one year goals. So for example, you know, if you want to live in a house somewhere on the coast of California, and you're going to need to earn a certain amount of money to do that, you're gonna have to start a new business, then perhaps your 12 month goal could be something like start that new business, start getting your first few key clients, set down your 
one year goals that's going to help you move towards those longer term objectives. So what I tend to do is I'll take my big dreams that I've got for my lifetime ambitions and I'll select my top three to five major long-term focuses or my obsessions as I call them. And then I'll chunk those lifetime obsessions down into individualized one-year goals. So if I've got an income goal, for example, I'll look at what I want to achieve in the long term and I'll say what's going to be feasible for me to work towards in this 12 months, this annual period. Do you get what I'm saying? So think about your long-term goals and then break it down into annual goals that you can work on over the next 12 months. So looking at your ideal lifestyle, what would you have to do to get this lifestyle in each of the five areas of your life within the next year? That's what this is all about. Now, once you've written out these five core goals, your top five uh, one-year goals, what I want you to do then is to get smart. This is about making your goals specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time timely. So this is the time I want you to get a bit more detailed about the goals on your list. So I use what I call the C2D2 approach to keep my clients accountable. What all that stands for is number one, is your goal clear? I.e., can I measure it? It should be binary. It should be, yes, it's done. No, it's not. If it's vague or or ambiguous and it can't be measured, then you need to go back to the drawing board. It needs to be specific. You need to be able to tell someone that you've done it or you haven't. It needs to have a measure to it. Second, the C is committed. Have you committed to achieving the goal? And then the D, the first D is due start date. When are you going to start working on it? And the second is deadline. Is your goal clear? Is it committed? Do you have a due start date? And when is the deadline? So make these one-year goals specific. And we're going to talk a lot more about how you can deconstruct these goals so you can create momentum in the next couple of episodes. But what I want you to achieve in this episode is to really think about those big visions that you have. Think about your lifetime aspirations, what you want your life and business to look like over the course of your life. It could be, you know, the near distant future. It could be the long term future. This is about really getting that true north. When we know where we're heading, then making decisions in the present is much easier to do because we're being guided by that long term focus. Then what you've done is you've broken it down into the next 12 months, hopefully getting smart about those goals, making them specific, making them measurable. What we're going to talk about tomorrow is deconstructing your goals so that you can create real momentum. We're going to talk about how you can break it down into 90-day plans, how you can create the habits and rituals and routines that's going to support you in actually achieving these goals. There's no point just having a dream. This isn't about just daring to dream and creating a design. This is about going beyond our limits and actually going and make this happen. You know, this isn't just about dreaming. This isn't just about having a vision in our head. We have to unfold this thing and make it real. So what I'll be talking about in the next few days is how we can then take that high level vision, break it down, deconstruct it, so you can actually create real momentum on a day-to-day basis. That's the critical part of this piece. You know, taking action on your goals is the only way that you're going to achieve them. So we're going to talk about how you can break the plans down and, uh, and really figure out on the inspired action that you need to take to make these goals happen. So hopefully this has been thought-provoking, inspiring. I've been on another rant. I do apologize for my sometimes uneloquent delivery. I'm just in the moment. I'm vibing. I'm finding my my rhythm again. If you've just listened for the first time, there was a long gap between episode 91 and 92. If you want to find out why, go listen to episode 92. But I am back, baby, and I'm delivering a daily episode right down to count us down to episode 100 This is episode 94. We've got six to go. Season two is on its way. This summer of freedom is about to take off. If you choose to join me on this mission, I'd love to help you achieve your goals. If you're ambitious and you're looking to start a business or you're in business, you want to create a business based upon your ideas, your talents, your knowledge, and your expertise, I've put together a very special five-part mini course. I've had loads of people go through this already. The feedback has been awesome. I've seen some real transformations. This is completely free right now. I am going to be charging for this in the near future. That's not a BS promise. I am going to be charging for it. People have told me they would have paid for it. I'm going to start charging for it. Uh, If you're interested in doing it while it's free, if you're listening to this in August 2017, then congratulations, you can access it for free. If not, sorry, I'm sure it's still good value for you. Come back and tell me. Go to danjgregory.com forward slash freedom, danjgregory, D-A-N-J-G-R-E-G-O-R-Y.com forward slash 
freedom and go and sign up for the free five-day business freedom mini course. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to help you get clarity on how you can build your business, how you can build a business based upon your knowledge, your talent, and your ideas. It's going to give you real clarity around who your ideal customer is, how to reach that ideal customer, how to pitch yourself to the market. The pitch exercise, by the way, is transformational. Just that alone has helped people no end in their business. Go and download the five-day mini course. Enjoy it. Let me know how you get on. Come and join me in the free private Unstoppable Mastermind group, the the private Facebook group for for the Unstoppable tribe. We're going to kickstart this summer of freedom movement together. You know, I appreciate I cannot do this on my own. I need other leaders just like you. Other leaders just like you to help me kickstart this this movement, this summer of freedom mission of mine. Uh, I want to co-create and collaborate with you. Let's help more and more people around the world to reinvent, to revolutionize their life and to create that life by design. Thank you for listening. As always, I appreciate every single one of you listening to this show. It's an honor and pleasure to serve. Uh, I've finished going at 100 miles an hour now. I'm going to go chill out, drink some water, and get ready for the next session. I'm recording six episodes tomorrow for this series, uh, so I'm going to go get some rest. Thank Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, as always, go out there, unleash your greatness in the world, Make your impact, build your empire, and live your ultimate life because you, my friends, are unstoppable. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.